Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Little. Uh, I'm the health teacher here at Walnut Creek and Clifford Smart. And I just want to go through and speak to you today about HIV and AIDS. We're going to give uh, a presentation. We've put together a Google slide. This was put together fairly quickly, so it's not going to go into as much depth as we could in person, which we normally do. And so I hope you bear with me as I toggle back and forth between the presentation of the Google Slides and the demonstrations that I'd like to share with you. All right, so here we go. Uh, what I'd like to do is start off with, we'll go through and give, uh, we'll go through these slides together. And like I said, I'm gonna stop it on occasion and just discuss with you about what I'm talking about. So again, here we go. HIV and AIDS education and awareness. So what is AIDS? AIDS is short for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. AIDS is, AIDS is a disease that slowly destroys the body's immune system. And without these important defenses, a person with AIDS, they can't fight off germs and or cancers. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. It kills an important kind of blood cell, the CD4, the T lymphocyte or T cell. These T cells are the quarterbacks of the immune system. And as they die off, the body becomes more and more vulnerable to other diseases. Germs take the opportunity to invade the body. When people with HIV get these infections or when their T cells T cell levels get too low, they have AIDS. So let me describe what that really means. So for a person with what we would consider a normal functioning immune system, if they were to acquire any sort of sickness, bacterial or viral, their immune system will beat it. It turns on inside our blood and in our gut, and then it gets rid of the disease. So the common cold, person gets it with a normal functioning immune system, it will typically fight it off. However, when a person has AIDS or HIV, it's very difficult for the immune system to fight off any sort of sickness or illness. So how long does it work? Like, What are some of these timelines that we're talking about here? Usually, it takes many years for HIV to weaken the body's immune system to the point of AIDS. Uh, so in general, HIV starts and then it turns into AIDS. What is absolutely sensational is that right now we have uh, antivirals called anti-HIV drugs that help prevent this. When a person already has AIDS, the drugs cannot help a person get better. So the idea here is very similar to cancer. Even though uh, cancer and AIDS are completely different, when they identify the disease, when they just say what stage is it in, in cancer, there's one, two, three, and four stages. Stage four is typically the worst. Well, AIDS and HIV is the same concept. There's many stages that it takes, and once it gets to the worst stage, it's very difficult to fight off with drugs. But the good news is if a person catches it early enough, these antivirals can help manage, never get rid of, yet manage the disease so that their immune system will still work and a person can live a long, healthy life. All right. Um, Anti-HIV drugs let many people with HIV infection live healthy lives. Combinations of these powerful medicines work very well, but they often have serious side effects. People with HIV have to keep taking these drugs every day for the rest of their lives. I was speaking with a parent on my son's lacrosse team who happened to be a nurse, and we were talking about, obviously I love health, and so we were talking about some of the different drugs that have been produced and created, which I believe is a miracle, to help treat AIDS. And I said, I just cannot believe what's happening in the world. This is amazing. And she said, yeah, but you have to be very careful and understand that this set of combination of drugs has a lot of side effects and it is not pleasant. It may help a person live longer, which is wonderful. However, it is very difficult and it can have 
a lot of negative impacts on the body. And the reason I share that with you is this. It's always better to prevent HIV and AIDS through sound practices behaviorally. So what you do, what decisions you make, as opposed to taking a risk and contracting the virus. All right, so what causes AIDS? Uh, again, as I stated, uh, human, immune, human immunodeficiency virus causes AIDS. Again, it goes in from one stage to the next. There is no cure, but there are certain antiviral drugs out there that help keep it in check and to keep the body's immune system working in a way that will normalize and fight off certain infections, whether bacterial or viral. So let's talk about how can HIV and AIDS be spread. The first way is through sexual intercourse. I have taught this lesson to many, many students, hundreds, maybe even thousands. And one of the number one questions that come up constantly is, can AIDS virus just surface into a person's body? And the answer is no. It must be given to another person. You must get it from another person. Hopefully you never will. You're going to make smart decisions and that's never going to happen. But the first one is through sexual intercourse. Bodily fluids from the guy and bodily fluids from the girl will be exchanged. And once that exchange takes place, it is absorbed into the blood. And that's when the virus begins to replicate and uh, begin to grow with inside of the body. Number two is the sharing of needles and syringes. So I have a little pen here to demonstrate that sharing process. The needle itself doesn't cause AIDS. Here's what happens. When drug users whose minds are altered and not working well, their decision-making is very, very poor and low, what they do is they stick a needle into their vein where there's blood and they push the blood or the, I'm sorry, they push the a drug inside of the vein. But what happens is blood is absorbed back up into the dirty needle now. And then the drug user who is not of sound mind will pass it along. And then that person injects not only the blood, the tainted blood, the bad blood that contains AIDS, and then the drug. So again, the person who has the disease, the AIDS, if they shoot the drug in there and then blood comes back up inside of the needle, they share the dirty needle with another person, and then not only do they inject the drug, but they also can inject the AIDS virus. Pretty scary. For me, even when I go in for my annual physical, I watch to see to make sure the lady who's drawing my blood for my annual physical, she grabs a clean needle and advocate for yourself. Make sure you ask, is that needle clean? Okay, so the other way is from a mother to her infant during pregnancy, delivery, or breastfeeding. Those are the other ways that the HIV virus can pass along. And then lastly, it's by getting a tattoo or piercing from a dirty infected needle. So let me just quickly show you again what that means and adjust my camera here. So if a person is typically, there's an ink pen, you know, they're hooked up and it's making this noise. But what's happening is it's coloring the skin. And what happens when it's tattooing the arm is blood will come out of the skin because they're pressing too hard. Well, the blood on that needle, if a person has AIDS, remember, you have to have it to give it. It's never it's not going to just magically occur or appear. If if I had AIDS and I'm getting a tattoo and then somebody takes that same needle because they were irresponsible and reckless and they never cleaned the tip of it or changed it altogether, and then they use it on another person's arm, they could then get infected. So that is the last way. So there's four big important ways that HIV may be uh, spread from one person to the other. And again, I'm going to say this several times, but a person must have it to, to get it, to give it rather. It's not just going to magically occur, uh, spontaneously combust. No, it's not like cancer. Uh, it's not like that at all. 
one person has it within their blood system and their bodily fluids, and then they change or they transfer it somehow into another person's through either sexual intercourse, sharing needles, uh, delivery. The mom has the disease, has the HIV, not knowing, and then passes it along to their baby. And then finally, by the tattoo, as I demonstrated already. Okay, the HIV virus cannot spread from one person to another by talking or being in the same room or on the bus. This is a myth. It's just simply not true. It's not going to be passed along through the air. It's not going to be passed along through touching or even kissing. There's this not going to happen that way. Uh, you can't catch it from a toilet seat um, or even touching an infected person. You, you Basically, you cannot catch HIV from being sneezed, coughed, or spit on. The virus travels through blood and other bodily fluids, which we've already discussed in great detail. Uh, in everyday life, it's very hard for the virus to get from an infected person to a healthy person. Very hard. Uh, this may happen during sex sexual intercourse or when drug users who inject drugs share their needles. And again, it's because the needle contains the tainted blood of somebody who has AIDS, and then they inject that blood. Uh, you cannot catch, catch HIV unless an infected person's body fluids, blood, semen, or vaginal secretions enters your bloodstream. And again, remember, it's the exchange of the bodily fluids. Most people think it's only an exchange of blood to blood, and it's not. It's within the, uh, the semen and the vaginal secretions uh, during intercourse. So how will a person know if they have AIDS? Oftentimes, they have no idea, especially when they first contract the virus. So HIV comes in three stages, acute infection, clinical latency, and then AIDS. So when a person is first infected, they really don't even know it. Oftentimes, there's no signs or symptoms. And what they do is, or not they do, what is understood is each person is different. And so what happens is there is, uh, when on the, in, sorry, during the acute infection part, it's the earliest and shortest stage of HIV infection. And again, people just simply they may have it, but they have no idea. They might have symptoms, but they not, but they might not. It depends on the, each person. So most people will come down with a flu-like illness three to six weeks after the infection. The symptoms are the same as the flu or mononucleosis, which is often referred to as mono. They have fever and fatigue lasting for a week or two. That's why it's so important if you believe that you, or if a person believes that they have contracted the virus to get tested immediately. Why? One, you can get help to manage the disease in the earliest stages. Two, you can ensure that you will not pass it on to others. Very, very important. AIDS itself has no symptoms because the immune system is devastated. Disease symptoms are specific to the kind of infections a person may have. When a person's T cells get very low, doctors prescribe drugs to prevent infections. This is very powerful. And we are so lucky to be living in an era where they have furthered the medical advancements to fight AIDS. 20, 30 years ago, there wasn't this hope. Now there's a scientific way to battle AIDS. So uh, let's be clear though, there's no cure. There's still no cure out there and it's more important to prevent the disease from ever entering in your body through healthy decisions, having the knowledge, which hopefully after today's video and PowerPoint, you'll have a greater understanding of how the disease works, how it's transferred and what you can do to ensure that you never contract this virus. HIV and AIDS is among the most dangerous diseases in the world today. We're not talking about just America, we're talking about the entire 
world. Uh, it's very dangerous. There's no cure for it, only prevention, as I've stated probably five times already. And again, prevention is the rule of thumb. If it's wet and sticky and not yours, don't touch it. So please do your best. Make sound decisions now that you've acquired the knowledge. Make healthy decisions. Put yourself in good situations so you're not exposed to this virus. And live your best life. And the way that you do that is make sure you make wise decisions, healthy decisions. That's all for me. Again, my name is Mark Little. I'm a health teacher here in Wald Lake Consolidated Schools. And I want to thank you all for your attention on this very important man, uh, matter. And I'd like to also say we're all in this together and that we have to do our part. And you can do your part as well. Thank you very much. And you guys, you guys have a great day.